Hello everybody, Andy Parks again with the Benadero Flying Museum. And today we're going to start the process of rebuilding the rudder on the Fokker D8. I'm standing in front of our Fokker D7 that my dad built in 1971 and I as a little boy helped with. But today we're going to work on the D8. We're going to look at rebuilding that rudder, putting it to the original dimensions of the only known existing part of a Fokker D8, the one in our collection there that we talked about in the earlier video. Today we'll take the rudder off the Fokker D8, we'll look to build the template so we can build up a new one, again the correct dimensions from the original one of World War I. Then we'll cover it, we'll put it on the D8, we'll give it a test flight. Hopefully this will help in the handling characteristics of the airplane when we either take off and transition from the tailwheel on the ground to the tailwheel in the air, and then when we land, wheel first and then bringing the tail down. Um, this should give it better handling characteristics, again, with a smaller balance in front. We'll talk about that as we get over to the plane and look to take off that rudder. Again, Andy Parks, Vinagero Flying Museum. Here we are again in the hangar with our Fokker D8 and the rudder that we're going to take off right here. This is the rudder we'll take off and then build a new one. Um, just a matter of taking off some hinge bolts, control cables, it'll be ready to go down to the maintenance hangar. We'll look to draw a template from it and then re-weld up a new one. We'll have to cover it, fit it, make sure the hinge points are the same and then we can give it a test flight. This process in reality is probably going to take us about two to about two weeks or so, but you'll be lucky enough to see it over a couple of days here as we post these videos in the reconstruction of the rudder. All right, we just have one more bolt here to go, and this rudder ought to be able to slide off here. Oh, it's pinched on pretty good, but there it comes now. Now the rudder's off, and again, we'll look to rebuild it. I want to save this one because if by chance we don't have a change, then this is still a good rudder. Otherwise, maybe we'll look to put this on eBay and raise some money for the museum. Again, the rebuilt or the replica rudder that we built for the airplane from the Ed Swearinger and Reinhold Plotz drawings from 1967. <clears throat> tell you what would be fun, maybe I'll get the rudder out of the collection and we'll just see how it mounts up here. Again, I expect the nose of that rudder to be somewhere over here instead of all the way up here. This white line on the vertical, sta or vertical stabilizer here is where the balance would end, sort of keeping balance there proportionally paint-wise. So, We'll look, I think I'll look to do that. Gotta wash my hands though, we don't want to have this on the, on the original rudder. Check this out. Here's the original rudder off an original Fokker E5, which would later be called the Fokker D8, sitting on top of our replica. And just as we knew was going to happen, this distance here, this balance is that much shorter than the replica one that we built. So, here again, We'll look to rebuild one to these dimensions and then fly behind it and see how it flies. But can you believe after who knows how many years of not being on an airplane, this thing almost even fits up. Matter of fact, it would fit right on here if it weren't for the fact that we have a tailwheel here. The holes actually line up to the bolts. It's got the old Fokker uh, swing hinge and uh, it's really interesting, or squeeze hinge I should say. Really interesting to see this. I mean, amazing to think that this rudder, almost, I mean, almost 100 years old, just about 92 years old now, is sitting here on this airplane. Wonder how it feels. What a great fun to have in history here. One thing that's kind of fun to notice about this rudder is the fact that there's no tapes on it. It's just a piece of fabric covering the whole entire rudder. 
but no tape. You'd normally kind of expect to see a tape along this area here down this um, tube here that gives support to the rudder or maybe a, tube, a tape on the edge of the rudder around but there isn't one. It's just covered in fabric and painted. Again there's that original Fokker serial number E5 and I'm going to try and see if I can do this a little better than last time and give a better look in the light here of the Fokker emblem. There it is. E5 rudder. Sitting on a Fokker D8 for the first time probably in about oh 80 years, 85 years I'd imagine. I know that this uh, the plane was built in 1918, so the rudder was built in 1918 in original fabric. Well, let's take it down and see how it compares with the uh, replica on the drawing board, and uh, we'll get it taken care of. Well, here we are now at the maintenance hangar, and I've taken the replica rudder and the original rudder, brought them down. Plan is now I'm just going to trace them. It's kind of simple, we'll make a pattern, then we'll be able to weld up a new one. But, I want to trace also the replica and then lay the original over it and trace it out and just see overall the differences between the two. So we'll do that and we'll just see what it comes out to be. <coughs> Well, I've drawn out the two, and we'll take a close-up and look at the difference between the two. Kind of interesting. <clears throat> so, here we are looking down at the two, and let's see if I can get this better. Basically, the red outline is the original rudder. The black outline is the replica rudder. You see a longer balance out front and less rudder surface area because effectively there's less rudder because basically the overall dimensions the same. You notice the hinge points almost match up perfectly. Now we'll trace out the original and look at its dimensions. There's a nice picture of the E5 stencil factory serial number 2790 and that Fokker decal. Try and get a nice close-up there. A little worn for the years, but not bad. Interestingly enough, I found another mark on the rudder fabric. Right, I don't know if we'll be able to see it, but right there. It's upside down, but it appears to be possibly an E, a W, and an I. Possibly but a stamp of fabric let's see if I can get a little and that is on the balance there of the rudder underneath printed on the original fabric not on the painted part but on the original fabric well, that might not be right. That might be a painted part there. It's hard to say. But it's definitely some sort of stamp. More than likely upside down. Let's look at it from the other side here. <clears throat> so we come at it from this way. Does it appear any different? Not quite sure what the stamp is, but definitely a stamp, some sort of stamp of the fabric possibly. I would think that this piece of fabric is actually four color lajin that was painted white. Now I could be wrong about that, but if we look underneath the tapes 
they actually did put a tape around the hinge. And if you look under there, you'll see that it is the, let me get this thing to focus better. That's better light. If you look under here, there's a darker color there, and it sure looks like part of a four color lajan. That's on the hinge. Great shot here too of the original hinge that Fokker manufactured. Now I just screwed that down so I'd have a way to study, steady the rudder as I traced it. But there's that famous Fokker hinge. And let me tell you as a builder of these aircraft, someone who's been around them for quite a while and seen them built, that's a pretty technologically nice simple style of hinge. A lot more simple than what we see on like the British aircraft and French. It may be a little more effective, a lot more surface area, that's for sure, than on the British, like an SE5 or a Sopwith Camel style of hinge. Matter of fact, I can demonstrate that pretty nicely. Hold on. In comparison to the Fokker rudder here, we've got a replica Sopwith Camel rudder. Now, this is just like the original, built like the original. Um, I know that because we do have an original up in the collection. But what's really interesting is if we zoom in here and we look at this style of hinge, it's a lot more difficult to build. Here's the, now this is the vertical stabilizer side of the hinge. See it's a fixed piece welded on there. Two little teeny bolts bolt through there and would bolt the rudder, which is this side, right in there. Let's see if we can get a little better. So that would slide in there, bolt through. Now on the rudder side, which is this side, look back here, there's the rudder. On this side, and it's best demonstrated at the bottom down here, there are the rudder horns where the control cables would go. And here is the hinge point. Okay, and this piece rotates in here. I've got it kind of heavily painted right now, but this piece would rotate right there, and that's the, the piece that swivels. And if you notice, here's my, put my finger here, you can kind of get a feel for how small a point that is. Peel this back a little bit. It's just a very small little bearing point in here. Now, on the Fokker, let's go over here. Here's my finger to help give you a feel for that. But if you look, that bearing starts here, bushing I should say, and goes all the way up to here. So it's almost the length of my first joint on my finger there. And you can see a much better, much better uh, moving bushing and hinge point.